Tonight, a challenge has been issued to the Philippine administration to disclose the specifics of the plan to finance the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. The St. Lucia Dry Goods Vendors Association applauds the GPH port rehabilitation deal. And the former president of the National Consumers Association says the imposition of the new 2.5% health and security tax is ill-timed. This is the Hot 7 Mackey News with Daniela Edwin. Good evening, it is Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. I am Daniela Edwin. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We are on Flow Channel 117, KISS FM, the Caribbean Hot FM mobile app and the Caribbean Hot 7 TV Facebook page. Not forgetting those of you using the Hot 7 plug and play antenna, thank you for joining us. With the injection of 75 million U.S. dollars into the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project and the rehabilitation of the George Odlem Stadium, the United Workers Party has issued a query on the government about how these funds will be spent. The opposition has challenged the Philip J. Pierre administration to specify the amount required for each phase of the project. Public relations officer for the United Workers Party, Leonard Spidermon Toot, has asked the Prime Minister to be more forthcoming with information regarding subjects of national interest. This comes after Montoot accused the Prime Minister of being vague on the finer details surrounding the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. While Montoot applauded the Saudi Arabian government for facilitating the $201 million loan, he questioned how this number was arrived at and whether or not the amount was sufficient to finish the hospital and to rehabilitate the George Odlum Stadium. Montoot stated that the best way to show gratitude for such a generous loan was to ensure that the funds were not squandered. He encouraged the Prime Minister to provide an assessment of the amount needed to rehabilitate the original hospital building, which to date is yet to be released. Montoot asked that the same be done for the new building and that a comparison be made between the two. This, he says, will allow the public to understand the basis for choosing to return to the original structure. After 14 years, four successive governments and two incomplete projects, St. Jude Hospital is no closer to being delivered to the residents of the south of the island. Millions of dollars in taxpayers' money has been spent both in the reconstruction of the original structure and in the commencement of a new building. Now the Philip J. Pierre regime has secured a further $201 million loan with not even a timeline as to when the facility will be completed. Montoot reminds the Prime Minister that after the five-year moratorium on the loan has ended, it is the people of St. Lucia who will be responsible for footing the bill. The Prime Minister indicated that those funds would go toward the completion of St. Jude Hospital and the rehabilitation of the George Odlum Stadium. This leaves us with quite a number of questions. But before I go into my questions, I want to ask of the Prime Minister that he be a little more forthcoming with information that pertains to the general public. Because after all, while we have a five-year moratorium, five years from now, it is St. Lucians who will have to repay that $201 million. And so we are entitled to know exactly what is being done uh, with the $201 million and what the plans are. Montoot states that the fact that no clear timeline has been issued for the completion of the hospital is indicative of poor planning on the part of the government. While it was stated that the George Odlum Stadium should be finished by 2028, there was no mention of how much of the monies would be utilized for this phase of the project. In light of the fact that the hospital must first be functional before any work commences on the stadium, Montoot questions whether or not the government has a clue as to how they will achieve this feat. We have not been told how much it will cost to complete the St. Jude's Hospital. We have not been told how much it will cost to rehabilitate George Odlum Stadium. 
So I'm asking the question, how did we arrive at $201 million? Are we certain that $201 million will do all what the Prime Minister says that it will do? The next question is, what is the time frame that we can expect for the completion of St. Jude's Hospital? St. Lucians have been waiting some 14, 14 years over some, this is a fourth administration now, for the completion of the St. Jude's Hospital. I think we should be at the juncture where we should be told precisely when it is expected that this hospital will be completed. The mere fact that we cannot be given a date is further indication that there is no planning going on in, in government and that the government does not have a clue as to what exactly it is doing. Montout also charged the Prime Minister to clarify his plans for the new building, asking whether part of this structure will be incorporated in the finished hospital. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News, I am Eldris Charles. President of the St. Lucia Vendors Association, Peter Ras Ipa Isaac, has expressed elation over the recent collaboration between Global Pot Holdings and the government. According to Isaac, the initiative will breathe new life into the vendors' arcade and could open up the possibility for merchants to tap into new markets. Queen Sajis met up with the president and filed this report. The decision by the government to sign a 47 million US dollar deal with Global Pod Holdings, has received commendation from the president of the local vendors association. This collaboration will see the development of podcast trees and other facilities in its surroundings. One of the compounds which stands to benefit from the deal is the Castries Vendors Arcade. President Peter Ras Iper Isaac noted that such a development is one that the vendors are looking forward to. Isaac added that while the delays surrounding the signing casted doubt among the vendors initially, the plans have provided cause for excitement. We are really elated, uh, the vendors association, the vendors themselves, we are very elated that they, because of the news we are hearing of the signing of the agreement uh, with, uh, with GPH, the government signed the agreement um, in terms of the, the, port, the, the, the global port holdings and the, re the redevelopment and development of podcast streets. So we uh, uh, I think that it's a very good thing. It's a step in the right direction. And I think um, we, we almost thought it wouldn't happen, but um, hearing the news now, it has put us in a situation where we know. Um, because some of the features that are in this whole you know, plan of the redevelopment of car streets really augurs well for the for the for vendors in terms of what the, the layout and so on the prospect of being able to gain a larger piece of st lucia's cruise market was of particular note to isaac with more tourists expected to frequent this newly developed arcade the president believes that it will bode well for economic empowerment for the vendors further isaac noted the possibility of the arcade becoming a hotspot for nightlife with new features extending the commercial activity to later in the day. Based on the settings, based on some of the, 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 the drawings and so on, the sketches that we have seen, it seems to me that it's definitely going to be, uh, we probably will get, have a better slice of the pie, so to speak, in terms of the cruise ship tourism, tourism and, and tourism industry. So, um, especially the whole question of having some F&Bs, you know, food and beverages, more of that there. Uh, we could probably, the, the area can be used as probably uh, where we could have night activities, not just, there, there will be a lot of lighting and uh, we could probably think of having a particular um, thing happening similar to what is happening in, in Grosley on Fridays maybe find another day to have something like that in the evenings and, and have people staying in there longer than just staying there from, from, from 6 to 6 maybe 6 until 10 or, or whatever. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News I am Queen Sejis. A former president of the National Consumers Association says while he agrees with the government's proposal to prioritize health and security, the latest levy imposed on citizens to fund the initiative is ill-timed. The new 2.5% levy came into force from August 2nd and according to officials from the Inland Revenue Department, all items imported into St. Lucia as well as a non-exhaustive list of services will attract the tax. Eldris Charles has more on that story. 
When the proposal for the implementation of a 2.5% health and security levy was first introduced by Prime Minister Philip Pierre, consumers were led to believe that certain items, including medication and food, would not attract the tax. As a result, the impression was that prices on these goods would not be affected. However, for consumers, this is not the reality as persons recount their shopping experiences on social media and on local call-in programs. Expert analysis on the taxing regime indicates that the price of some goods and services are more expensive due to the fact that the 2.5% levy is applied after the cost insurance and freight or CIF charges at the port. Following that process, the VAT amount is then added to determine the final cost, which is thereafter passed on to wholesale and retail merchants. Speaking on the situation during Wednesday's Good Morning St. Lucia with host Shannon Labon, the former president of the National Consumers Association, Mr. Hubert James, drew on his own retail experiences with soaring prices. He observes that while health and security must be prioritized by any government, he fears that the new tax regime will cripple citizens. My problem goes towards the the rapid movement of prices of goods and services in our stores and supermarkets. And I think something has to be done with this thing. Mm -hmm. I went to the marketing board, which gave me a shock. I bought three, as figure three, one to three, hands of green figs at the, at the marketing board. And I paid twenty-one dollars and seventy-five cents. Twenty-one dollars and what? Twenty-one dollars and and seventy-five cents for three hands of green figs, and not big green figs again, not, not big hands neither. Mm. I said, but what? What must I do? James has also expressed fears that the new taxing structure may give rise to price gouging on the parts of merchants. He explains that while there is a general understanding that some food crops require additional cultivation investment in order to bring satisfactory yields for farmers, others are not as laborious and should not attract such steep retail charges. He cites as examples certain tropical fruits. Now, when... People have to face this kind of, this kind of prices in the, in, the, in the supermarket. Every single day, the same thing you're accustomed of buying. For X amount, you buy of buying so many items for, for X dollars. You have to triple that amount of money for the very same item. Mm -hmm. And that's where my problem lies. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News, I am Eldris Charles. Still to come in the first segment of the broadcast, the POV. The POV provides you, our valued viewers and listeners, an opportunity to sound off on trending issues in the news only from your point of view. Considering the deplorable state of the island's roads and the outcry from commuters, motorists and other road users to the government to make the necessary repairs, the situation has given rise to another issue that has been affecting Denver residents who have to wait long periods to make the bus commute back home on afternoons. We asked bus drivers on that route what is the biggest challenge in transporting passengers on a daily basis. Here is what they had to say. That thing they are doing at cul de sac there. I'm in the roundabout. When you get a traffic jam there, where can you go? Now the passengers are not in that because when they reach there, they just want the bus to go at their home. Yesterday, but we are trying our best to see what wind. can we do. The volume of traffic, I would say, the volume of traffic. And. Um, yeah, the volume of traffic, the, 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 the amount of, 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 of um, um, those, those, those big, 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 big containers, there's be a lot on afternoons, you know, so, sometimes you make two or three, 
coming going up the road and when to pass it is it's very difficult. You know? That's my biggest problem is traffic. When traffic when we, we don't have traffic is up and down. We we are we're traveling all over the place. Traffic is so long at um, um, how you call there? At uh, Kalisak and we cannot get here on time to pick them up. Traffic. Is that traffic that causing people staying in Donga, sir? Traffic. That's all? Yeah. But traffic there is out of the month. All Kalisak there by, by Piton Company, they have enough traffic. So try and, try and solve the problem Kalisak there first, on Fixed Road first, then. So when they have traffic there, we can pass the road, we can do something. Coming up next, the United Workers Party remains skeptical about the GPH deal with government, calling it too good to be true. And as St. Jude Hospital continues to prioritize the narrative on plans for the government's new 75 million US dollar loan, questions are being raised about the plan for the rehabilitation of the George Audlem Stadium. Stay with the broadcast for the details to these stories and more right after the break.